Hey, boys and girls, welcome back to Pokemon Violets. In the last episode, we learned the ins and outs of probability within the world of Pokemon battling, learning a little more about the mysterious ex-gym leader, Time, and her connection to her sister, Rhyme. Learning of her inevitable retirement from the gym she used to call her own, and why it came to be that way, seeing it was as a way to focus more on her true passion, in teaching instead of worrying about both at the same time like she once did in the distant past. And with Rhyme, now as the gym leader of Montenevarum, she's been able to continue melding the minds of Yuva Academy without ever thinking of returning to the life she once lived. So, with that being said, we only have one more teacher left to officially do their Yuva Academy story with, because, let's be honest here, Jacques was one that was not like that, which is weird. I'm surprised he wasn't, but for some reason they felt like he had enough story, I guess. And I guess the Pokedex is kind of his way of doing it, which is kind of interesting. But, yeah, apparently we are on the final teacher. Technically, we will be finishing Jacques when we do the legendaries, but yeah, apparently this is it. So, with that being said, let's get into the final teacher. Uh, history being Rayforts. So, with that being said, one of the hardest te regular teachers for us to spawn during our uh, Academy Ace tournament, by the way. And that was another reason why I kind of left her for last, because she was the last one to appear. So, with that being said, let's begin the history lessons. Would I like to go to history with Miss Rayfort? Of course I would. So, here we go. I think class will begin shortly. So, off we go. We're finally going to get to meet R Miss Rayfort, officially. Although we had a small conversation with her during the first, like, little bit of time we were here. Oh, now that's interesting. Now that is very interesting. What's the professor from Pokemon Legends doing on her little blackboard there? What well, would be a blackboard, but it's a- obviously it's a screen, but still- the professor from Pokemon Legends Arceus is on the screen behind her, directly behind her. And also the original Pokeballs as well. That's interesting. Huh. I was not expecting to see that here, with the fact that that's the legend, you know, the history of, of Sinnoh, and not of Paldea. That's interesting. Okay then, well here we go. Oh, oh ho, I see we have some students here with us today. That is true. Hello, Miss Rayfort. My name is Rayfort. I will be the one to impart knowledge of the past to your little minds. Also, nice little Articuno necklace, by the way. I just noticed that. Huh. Okay, then. History is a wonderful thing. Truly splendid. The lives of our ancestors throughout history forge the path to the present in which we live. Today you shall learn about the most mysterious location of in all of Paldea, the Great Crater. Okay, well we've been down there, so we should know this one. Um, as you all are aware, a massive crater known as the Great Crater of Paldea exists in the hearts of our region. Um, the area inside this crater is called Area Zero, and research of its geological strata in material composition has shown that the crater is in fact over one million years old. Okay. So the world of Pokemon is indeed more than at least a million. That's good to know. Um, it was long believed that a certain something rested at the bottom of this mysterious crater. Well, the crystals that made Terra Pokemon? That is definitely one of them. Um, aha. Perfect timing to make eye contact. Young spooks, answer me this. Okay. What exactly was believed to rest in the depths of great, the Great Crater inside Area Zero? Well, treasure? Well, definitely not a Storlax, that'd be funny. Pokemon Center, definitely not. Some sort of treasure, but that treasure ended up being Terra Crystals. Oh, huh. that is correct. You are a surprisingly clever one, aren't you? I see you did your homework. I was also thinking that Hexagon Pokemon, but we didn't see that down there. So, yeah, I'm not really sure about that one. Very curious, though, about it, nonetheless. 
Um, I see you did your homework prior to the coming to class. Um, coming to this my class. No, we just knew it. Um, that's right. Some believe that a treasure more is more valuable than anything in this world rested in the depths of the Greek crater. Yeah, that's what they believed, but there really was no real treasure down there. Um, so much for dreams of treasure hunting. Though, as a lab has been built in those very same depths. Um, oh, and before I forget, you would all do well to remember that the Great Crater and Area Zero are both off-limits. Uh, too late on that one. To all but those who have official business there, do not dare entertain the foolish notion of gallivanting off to Area Zero in search of riches. It is no place for children dreaming of treasure and adventure. Uh, doubt on that one, with the fact that there's some pretty interesting Pokemon down there. Uh, besides, if it were at all possible to investigate the area, I would surely be the first to do so. I could definitely see that with you being the history teacher. Also, is that a Moltres uh, belt buckle? Or am I seeing... Or that could be Mol... Yeah, it could be Moltres. I was meaning to say Ho-Oh, to be honest. But, uh... It could be Moltres with the one, one in the middle where her neck is, seems to be Articuno. So where would Zapdos be if there if it is all three of the legendary birds? Um, oh ho, is that the time already? I must have gotten swept up in filling your mind with knowledge. This ends today's lesson. We will unravel more of the history's enigmas together next time. Okay. So far, interesting. I was not expecting to see the Legends Arceus Professor behind Rayford. That is very interesting. Mostly because of the fact that, well, that Sinnoh's past, and how would they have knowledge of what he looks like? That's interesting. Very, very interesting. But I guess maybe we'll get some ideas, or maybe it's just an Easter egg, but still. Weird, though. Nonetheless. Well, maybe the protagonist made their way back. I don't know. I never beat Arceus. Um, I'm still I'm still trying to, you know, collect all the Pokemon in Legends Arceus. And I have thought about doing that as a series at some point. It's not going to be our next game, obviously. But maybe in due time, we'll think about doing Arceus. Could be interesting. I do have to figure out how to record it, though, nonetheless. Also, what's going on with that one picture... But at the very back of the... Wait, are those timelines? Wait a minute. Those are timelines, I think. Where the little arrows are. So that's before the Pokeball. That picture back there. Which looks like a feudal area. Could be Pokemon Conquest. But that's interesting, though. So before Pokeballs, there's a timeline before that that's known in history. Is that the hint towards the next game? It could be. That's usually how they do it. That's interesting, though. Huh. Wonder where that is. But, okay then. That's interesting to see. So, whatever the next Arceus, or like, Legends Arceus game would be, that would probably be it on the far left there. Huh. Okay then. Interesting. But I don't see any other hints for what would be the next game in the series when it comes to after Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, unless that is it. But I see that more as like a Legends game than a regular Pokemon mainline game. But interesting though. Nonetheless, for sure. But let's continue. Um, greetings my little students. Whatever you did yesterday is now part of history. True. Um, today... We will continue to unravel the marvels that history has presented to us. Okay. About 2,000 years ago, this region came under rule of the Paldean Empire. Oh. You don't say. Interesting. Okay. That do do does look like a feudal kind of setting in that picture. So that's probably the Legends game for this game, if that's the case. Interesting. Historical accounts describe the Baldean Emperor as being quite the dictator. Well, that's kind of scary. 
This emperor also zealously believed the legend of the treasure that rests deep within Area Zero. Okay, interesting. I must mention that the civilizations of our ancestors were not as developed as ours is today. Well, obviously. People back then were far more likely to believe in mysterious legends, magic, and beings beyond human comprehension. In an attempt to gain the power to stand against Palabea's neighboring countries, the Emperor sent people in droves to join the hunt for... Wait. Okay, I thought I pressed A. Hunt for the fabled treasure at the Area Zero. Okay. Interesting. Um, aha. Uh -huh. Perfect timing for you to make eye contact, young spooks. Answer me this. Approximately how many years ago was it that the Paldean Emperor began to rule this region? Uh... I was not paying attention that close. Okay, now this is a question I'm not as sure about. Unless that maybe... No, I don't think she said anything about that. About 1,000 years ago? Okay, I was about to say that those didn't seem anywhere near, like, the right ones, to be honest, with the fact that the crater was a million years old. Okay, then. Uh, incorrect. You're off by an entire millennium. Why 1,000 years ago the Paldean Empire had already begun to collapse? The answer is about 2,000 years ago. That is when the great era of exploration began. However, it is said that not a single adventurer set out by the Emperor ever reached the depths of Area Zero. Why not? It seemed pretty simple to get down there. Um, was it the punishing journey itself that barred their way? Or perhaps some unknown creature? Probably a creature. The resounding failure of this great era of exploration almost certainly heightened the air. A mystery surrounding the crater. Um, oh. What I wouldn't give to explore Area Zero in its untouched state up at the time. Okay. Um, I suppose I can only hope for the swift invention of a time machine. Well, technically there is one for you down there, but uh, it's kind of turned off now. Um, oh ho. Is that the time already? I must have got swept up in my feet fi um, filing. And filing your minds with knowledge, or filling, I don't know why I said filing. This ends today's lesson. We will unravel more of the history of enigmas ne together next time. Okay. Interesting, um, hypothesis on the time machine. Because you could get that information quite early, couldn't you? Hmm, interesting. Very, very interesting on that one. But, let's begin number three. Already halfway into Rayfort for her classes. But the thing is, is still very, like, interesting when it comes to, like, the ideas of, like, this is more lore-based than it is anything else. Um, greetings, my little students. Whatever you did yesterday is now a part of history. Today we will continue to unravel the marvels that history has presented to us. As you should remember from our last class, Area Zero's great era of exploration began about 2,000 years ago. Yep, that is indeed the case. This era lasted for approximately 1,000 years, but not a single soul was able to venture all the way to the deepest reaches of Area Zero. Having poured much of its human and financial resources into the exploration of Area Zero for so long, the Paldean Empire fell into decline. 200 years late out later, or 800 years ago, the Empire and its surrounding nations united into one entity. This was the formation of Paldea as we know it today. Okay, so every area where a gym was was a nation before. Now that's interesting. Um, I guess. This very academy where you are now filling your young minds with knowledge was also apparently established at that time. I'm guessing this was probably the castle, then. Based on that, that's interesting. Huh. Very, very interesting. 
In fact, this school building, though, certainly having undergone repairs through the years, is just as it was when it was built a long time ago. Okay, then. This very structure is a piece of history. Ah, things of old are truly splendid. It would certainly I, I would certainly prefer it not to have the Pokeball portion, though. A relatively new addition. I guess so. But interesting, though, nonetheless. Oh, um, aha. Perfect time for you to make eye contact, young spooks. Let's see if you've been listening to my lecture. Tell me approximately how many years ago was this academy of ours established? Really? It's, a, it's literally, I'm just trying to listen to her story, and now I gotta try and remember how many years ago from there. Uh-oh. Okay, uh, well, she said 800 years ago was when everything started being established. So 800. Okay, thank you. It didn't say exactly, but there we go. Thank thankfully. Um, correct. I see the look of concentration on your face. Was indeed just that. I hate nothing more than when a student only pretends to listen. Well, I'm the worst possible student for your class, but sure. This academy was constructed, um, exactly 805 years ago, to be precise. Okay. In other words, your academy here is 805 years old. Okay. At the time, it offered state-of-the-art facilities in uniquely innovative curriculum as such. People used to say. Okay, then. Interesting. Those seeking knowledge need to look no further than the grapes of Paldea, or the oranges of Paldea when it comes to Scarlet. Oh, that's right. They were referring to Yuva Academy. It's said that this proverb of sorts was even used outside the Paldean region. Okay, then. Um, oh ho. Is that the time already? I must have gotten swept up in filling your minds with knowledge. This ends today's lesson. Our next class will be our midterm exam. Bring the wonders of history to the forefront of your minds in preparation. Okay, then. Interesting. Very interesting. Well, the thing is, is with it, um... I know this is kind of a small spoiler for Legends, because I don't know when we're going to get into Legends is why I'm bringing this up. But in Legends, the exploration team that is, you know, not from Sinnoh, very much will be from the Empire of Paldea. That's very possible. I'm wondering how possible that is, though, just because it's not specifically stated. Because that would make a lot more sense if Paldea is the next Legends game. Huh. Interesting. Very, very interesting, in fact. But into the next midterm. But that's all I really have on that, because it's not really stated. It's only stated at, like, the very beginning that they're not from Sinnoh. So, that's interesting. Because obviously it's the Diamond Clan and the Pearl Clans that were the people that were already there. But, huh, okay then. Um, greetings my little students, it is time for our midterm examination. Summon your historical knowledge from the dark recesses of your minds and answer the questions. What is the name of the geological formation in the center of Paldea region? Well, obviously the Paldean Valley floor, that's interesting. The center of Paldea, the great crater of Paldea. What was long believed to rest in the depths of Area Zero? Mysterious Pokemon, a school of treasure. It seems to be actually a Pokemon based on the Hexagon thing, but treasure specifically. How many years ago did the Paladin Empire begin to rule this region? Approximately 2,000 years. How many years ago was the Academy built? 805 years ago. Those seeking blank need to look no further than the grapes of Paldea. Knowledge? Yeah, that would be knowledge. I, I wasn't expecting them to ask this question, to be honest. 
uh, knowledge of Paldea, I guess. I think that's it. That would make the most sense, because it's a school. Oh, your time is up. Put your writing utensils down. The last question was a freebie. Even the least capable of you surely padded the score there. Okay, that's a little mean. I sincerely hope you did anyways. So ends up, so ends your, our midterm examination. You may ask for your scores at the school's front desk. Okay. The less gifted of you should be able to get this answer. Wow. That's a little, uh, a little harsh, don't you think? Just gonna be honest, but okay. Well, let's see here. I should, I think, 5 of 5, right? Yeah, 5 of 5. I'm surprised about that one. Just because the knowledge one was one that I wasn't as sure about. Just because I wasn't, I didn't expect her to ask that question, to be completely honest. But History 4, here we go. So far, hers is a little bit more in-depth. Because that's more, like, lore-based than it is anything else I was expecting. So, it's good that we saved her for last, because she's, uh, definitely an interesting subject to look into. Especially now that we're nearing the end of our story. Um, greetings, my little students. Whatever you did yesterday is now part of history. I was hoping to continue unraveling the marvels that history has presented us to us today. However, I imagine your ability to concentrate has been spectacularly derailed by my midterm. I suppose changing things up for fun and variety may be a good idea every now and then. So allow me to tell you an old fairy tale that has been passed down in Paldea for generations. Fairy tale, you say? Once upon a time, there was a king who very much enjoyed collecting treasure. Okay, the emperor. He was particularly fond of treasures from other countries. One day, a merchant from the east heard rumors of this king and came to meet him. Okay. The merchant laid out four treasures in front of the treasure-loving king. Four treasures? The four treasures were as follows, a vessel, a sword, a set of tablets, and a set of beads. Huh? Okay. Seeing such rarities before him, the king leaped for joy. He showered the merchant with gold coins and claimed all four treasures for himself. Okay, what do you mean by all this? Um, aha. Uh -huh. Perfect timing to make eye contact, young spooks. Answer me thus. Uh, answer you what? I have no clue about this. I said that one of the treasures was a set of tablets. What do you think these tablets were? Um... Well, obviously it can't be electronic, because it's old, old. Medicine wouldn't be it either. Wooden planks for writing on? That's the only one it could possibly be, but okay. Um, correct. Your daily pursuit of knowledge serves you well. These particularly ta particular tablets were wooden and used as a writing medium in the East and ancient times. As you may know, they fell out of popular use as paper became more universally available. Okay. So this was before Arceus because there was paper in Arceus. Because that's how, you're po how you do your Pokedex. Okay then. Interesting. So, is this fairy tale real, or is it a fantasy? That's what I really want to know now. For the king to consider these paper substitute treasures, they must have been superb, been of superb quality. That, or perhaps they had some amazingly profound teachings written on them. Maybe. So the king obtained these four treasures, and on that very night, it is said that a terrible disaster rained down upon his castle, reducing it to rubble by dawn. Okay, that's terrifying. Huh. Must have been a... Well, the only thing I can think of is a, a ghost-type Pokemon who was, like, haunting it or something. That's the only thing I can think of, because ghost-types usually bring ruin whenever you hear about them. But okay, then, that's terrifying. Um, oh ho. Is that the time already? I wasn't done with my story, but alas, so ends today's lesson. If you are interested in how the story ends... You may come to see me outside class hours. Okay. Wait a minute. I got a better look at that belt. That's, uh... Ne no, not Necrozma. That's, um... Let me think about it. It was Solgaleo... And Lunala. That was Lunala. 
Interesting. Why does she have a Lunala belt and an Articuno necklace? That's it. That's... Oh. Okay, then. That's weird. That's very weird. But okay, then. Wonder why that's the case. Just because it's a very interesting, uh... Like, combination when it comes to legendaries. Because that's obviously an Articuno necklace, and that's obviously Lunala belt. And I can't tell what's in her hair. She has something in her hair on the right side that I can't really make out. But that's all I can really see. Unless her... Actually, her little watch might be something, too. If we get a better look at it. But let's continue. Um, greetings, my little students. Whatever you did yesterday is now part of history. Today, we will continue to unravel the marvels that history has presented to us. I just, um, I trust that you all remember the less our lesson before the midterm exam concerning the great crater of Paldea in its interior areas, interior areas zero. This mysterious crater captured the imaginations of many, including the former Paldean emperor. 200 years ago, a group of explorers claimed to have finally reached its depths. Yep, that's the case, and that's what the Violet book and the Scarlet book are about. The name of the team that achieved this great feat was the Area Zero Expedition. The team is said to have been made up of Paldea's best and brightest. Skilled battlers, brilliant researchers, talented individuals of all kinds. Among the list of t team members was the name of a man who was the author and brilliant natural. I'm trying to remember his name. It was, uh, Heath. Heath, that's it. Yep, there it is. Historian Heath. After returning from the expedition at Area Zero, he used his literary talent to record the events of the expedition and publish them. I'm not really sure what that, that bracelet is. I got a better look at it, but it, it's not bringing anything to mind to me. Aha, uh -huh. perfect timing to make eye contact, young spooks. Let's see if you were paying attention. What was the name of the team that first made it to the deepest reaches of the Great Crater? Well, obviously the Era Zero Expedition. That's pretty simple. Um, correct. To pick up on the uh, and remember, a term I simply slipped into the flow of the lecture. You really are quite the clever one. The correct name of this team was the Area Zero Expedition. The record of their activities written by the expedition member, Heath, can be found in the bookstores in the like, even today. This record is known as the Violet Book, or the Scarlet Book, depending on what you're playing. At the time, the entire region of Paldea was absolutely buzzing about the Area Zero. The Violet Book was so popular that practically everyone had a copy, including Toro and Seda, depending on the games. However, the book itself was full of fantastical descriptions and il illustrations of things that could never be thought of as real, which they were, because we've literally seen them. The masses began to call Heath a liar. Even the truth of the expedition making it to the bottom of the crater was called into question. Well, the bottom of the crater is very possible to reach, so yeah, sure. The Violet Book was condemned to the shelves of used bookstores. It's just another book of wild paranormal stories. Well, how about you go down there, crazy people that call me, calling them out? You could easily reach it. Just go down there. There really won't be any more people complaining then, that's for sure. But, let's see. There's a copy of one of the book um, bookshelves on the ground floor of the entrance hall. Feel free to have a read if you're interested. Um, uh -huh. It's at the time already, I must have gotten swept up in filling your minds with knowledge. This ends today's lesson. We will unravel more of the history and histories of uh, or histories enigmas together the next time. Okay. Interesting, though. I was not expecting Heath to be put into question there. But that's an interesting name to bring up. Because that's another person I thought might have a Legends game. Because if they do it based on the Paladin Empire, they'd have to skip out on Heath. Unless Heath is the main character and the Paladin Empire is connected. Because time travel is a major thing when it comes to Legends. Based on the first one. 
We don't know based on we haven't had a second one yet, but that's very interesting to bring into question. But the final history class, here we come. Honestly, I'm wondering how that final is going to be because that midterm was kind of a little crazy. But let's get right into the final one because we're here finally. So off we go into the final class of our adventure. So, what has Ray Fort got for us? Um, greetings, my little students. Whatever you did yesterday is now part of history now. Today is our last class, so I would like to unravel the marvels that history has presented to us. One last time. In our last class, I taught you about the Area Zero expedition of 200 years ago, correct? Correct. The last 200 years ago is not that long ago. Not that long ago at all. How unfortunate that our history lessons must march so inexorably toward the future. Um, would it not be more of an adventure to march towards the past instead? That's what Seda thought. To start from our present and study history in reverse. Uh, that might be a little hard to follow. Um, indeed, it may be difficult to understand the flow of events. How one thing leads to another. If we were to treat history in reverse. Um, huh. I suppose I have no choice but to let the flow of time carry us towards the future instead. In the last class of ours, I shall fill your mind... Or in this last class of ours, I shall fill your minds with the history of the terrestrial... Or terrestrial phenomenon. The technology behind Terra Orbs has its origins in Era, Era Zero. Even after the Area Zero expedition supposedly breached the crater's de deepest depths and or others, continued to explore the area. And around 140 years ago, the Pokemon cloaked in mysterious light were discovered there. As you may have already guessed, these were in fact terrestrialized Pokemon. However, when those were di who discovered these Pokemon brought them out of Area Zero, the light faded and the terrestrial phenomenon remained a mystery for quite some time. However, ten years ago, ugh, that might as well be a present day, um, a certain someone you have definitely heard of unraveled this mystery. I'm guessing Toro? Or Seda, depending on the game. Um, aha. Perfect timing. To make eye contact, um, young spooks, answer me this. What is the name of the famous professor, professor who unraveled terrestrial phenomenon mystery? Obviously, Toro. Could technically be Clavel too, because Clavel does have a little bit tied to Toro in Seda, depending on the games. But obviously Toro or Seda, depending. Oh, correct. To think that you and your a new transfer of our academy could correctly answer this question, you must be very diligent in your studies. Nope, we literally met him. So yeah, sure. That's kind of a easy one, but let's be honest there. That's kind of a really depends on how you think about it, but the thing is, is we literally met him, so you can't really say yes or no on that one. But, interesting though, nonetheless about that. But, let's continue. Approximately ten years ago, a professor named Toro unraveled the mystery of the terrestrial phenomenon. He discovered that the shining crystals down in Area Zero, or rather the energy they emit, is what causes Pokemon to terrestrialize. This led the professor to invent Terra Orbs technology to develop a practical use for it. This technology was then shared with both Pokemon League and our Academy. I'm more surprised that he didn't use or Seda used Terra Orbs in their battles. I'm very surprised about that one. Because they easily could if they, you know, literally created the terror orbs. So, I don't know why he didn't. I really don't. But it is weird that he didn't use it in battle, or she didn't use it in battle, depending on the game. Um, rumor has it that Director Clavel was one of the researchers on the Professor's team. Which would make sense. Alas, this story is much less exciting now that someone else we, we all know appears in it. Modern history truly is dull, isn't it? That's not dull. I like Clavel. Thus ends my history classes. Our next session will be our final exam. Bring the wonders of history to the forefront of your minds in preparation. 
Okay. Yeah, we could definitely do that. Interesting, though. Though, about everything we have learned about the lore of this game. Just from Rayforth's classes. But, here we go. Final of the history. I have a feeling this one I might actually mess up, depending on the questions. This is the real one that I feel like is a... It would be fair if I did mess it up. Because the Ten Wonders of Paldea, there was no way I was going to know that one. That that wasn't even a fair question. But this one, uh, there's just so much to unpack that I could actually get one wrong. But let's see. Greetings, my little students. It's time for a final examination. Summon your historical knowledge from the dark recesses of your minds. And answer the questions. What is the area within Great Crater of Paldea called? Area Zero, that's a pretty easy one. How many years ago was this academy founded? 805 years ago. What of these, um, which of these did not appear in the Paldean fairy tale about the four treasures? Well, obviously a folding fan is definitely not one. Which Area Zero expedition member wrote the record of the team's activities? Leaf, Thief, Heath. They all rhyme, but obviously it's the Heath. How many years ago did Professor Toro invent Terra Orbs? That was 10 years ago, because we just learned that one. But there we go, that should be an ace. Oh, well, your time is up, but you're writing utensils down. You must excuse so that last question is too shallow and ridiculous to be on a history test. But alas, the director forced me to include it. So ends our final examination. You may ask your score for your scores at the school's front desk. Okay, and with that being said, we are now officially done with our lore-based uh, lore part of our episode, because that was more lore than it was learning about Rayfort, which is very interesting. Paldean Empire, you say? That's a very interesting thing, but 5 out of 5, we did it correct. So, with that being said, the only thing we messed up was the 10 Wonders of Paldea question. Out of all the questions that we could have messed up, technically the biology thing is still one that I can do, but I don't think there's any story attached to that, because Jock's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna open up more conversations with Shock. So, I just don't see it being a part of an episode. It's just, you know, it's kind of doesn't make sense to do it. Because the reason why we're doing these is because we get these stories at the end. So, I just don't feel like Jock's gonna have anything else for us if we do finish it. Because his story is the Pokedex. So, with that being said... Honestly, let's go see how Rayfort's doing in the staff room. So she's been sitting there this whole time, which is interesting. But let's go see what her story is and begin the beginning of the end of our Yuva Academy stories. Oh, you're- oh, uh, uh, yes. Spooks from Class 1A. Let's see if I can see what's on her side of her head. Yeah, not really sure what that is. What is that? The thing on her arm reminds me of uh, Mega Evolution, but it's definitely not that. Whatever it is, it looks like it has fins on the side of it. Huh. Weird. Unless, maybe the hairpin is more shadow. That's a Pokemon I really don't know much about, just because I never got that event Pokemon. And then I'm not sure about the... the bracelet, though. But I think that's Marshado. Marshado. Up on her hair, where her hairpin is. Hmm, interesting. The way you conduct yourself in my class and the answers you give to my questions, I admit they pique my interest. You're quite the interesting people, I must say. Well, thanks. Tell me, Spooks, given the choice, which do you prefer? Things of old or things of, that are new? Well, this game is all about future, so I like new stuff. Let's be honest there. Our story it was encompassing everything to do with the future. And in Scarlet, it's encompassing everything to do with the past. So we gotta go with the one that we're in the game for, right? It just, it's fitting. Oh, you would answer new stuff to me, your history teacher. Huh, you really are a curious one. Oh, yes. This one may indeed be of good use to me someday. Yeah, that's definitely more shadow. I see it a lot better when she turned her head like that. That's interesting. Why should, Why does she have a mythical Pokemon? Because the other two are legendaries. That's interesting. 
Um, as you can disregard, um, ah, you can disregard that. I was simply thinking out loud. I enjoyed our little conversation today. You have my big spooks. No problem. You became slightly closer with Miss Ray Fort. Interesting. It could be a water type Pokemon, but I'm not too sure on that bracelet. You are quite the interesting people, Spooks. I guess I really am, but let's go find where she is now. Because she's in the entrance hall now, apparently. I was surprised that um, Time and Rayfort have kind of sticked outside of their classrooms. Or at least so far for Rayfort. I don't know if we will go into her classroom for one of her stories, but it is kind of weird that uh, so far... We met her outside of her classroom and not inside of it like all the others. Well, let's continue. Um, why if it isn't Spooks from Class 1A? Are you perhaps interested in the rest of the old tale I told you in class? Sure. Okay, we're gonna learn more about that fairy tale then. Um, it is convenient that you would take the bait as I presented in class. A vessel of sort, a set of tablets, and a set of beads. After obtaining these four treasures, the king's castle was destroyed. Why, you ask? Yeah, why? Because these four treasures were actually four Pokemon. Oh, okay. And those could be our four legendaries we have yet to meet. Interesting. Um, as these Pokemon were passed from human um, hand to human hand as treasures, they slowly became tainted by hubris and greed. Finally, after coming in contact with the rapacity of the king at the time, they awakened as disasters and began to rampage out of control. The king called for renowned Pokemon wielders to defend the country, and after a fierce battle, the incarnations of disaster were quelled. Okay. It is said that these four Pokemon were then sealed away somewhere in Paldea, being those vaults. Okay. Now that makes a lot more sense. So those are the legendaries. Okay. So the fairy tale is real. Then. Okay. Very, very interesting. Because I've seen those vaults. You guys haven't seen them yet. Because I haven't shown them. I actually, I'm trying to remember. I think I showed the purple one. Because I said I found it in between episodes. And I wasn't sure about it. But we did find one of the stakes though. For sure. Behind Kofu's gym. And I you know, decided not to pull it out just in case if there was something bigger tied to it. So I didn't want to mess up there. But, interesting though. Very, very interesting that just in general, there's a fairy, like, we get to hear like a fairy tale about all of them. Okay. So what do you think? Would you say this story is just for make-believe? Make nope, it definitely ain't. We've seen them. We've seen the vaults. Or, I've seen the vaults, I should say, but still. Oh, ha, very astute of you. I've read many historical disaster reports, personal journals, and the like. There is much to support the truth of this story. Um, if I am, am able to prove this story's veracity myself, I will be sure to let you know. Okay. Oh, well, good to know. You became even closer with Miss Rayfort. Okay. Hmm. Well, we could bring those legends to her, right? That would definitely make sense. Oh, it looks like our next story's out here. Oh, spooks. The time has come. The cursed treasures of four Pokemon of Ruin. Pokemon of Ruin, you say? They exist. Well, obviously. That would, that would definitely answer what our legends are. And I stumbled upon the truth in the newspaper of all places. Ha! Huh. In an interview piece with a carpenter, no less. Okay. The Pokemon wields, wielders apparently use sacred stakes to seal those treasures of ruin and shrines. There is a separate shrine for each of the four Pokemon, and, each, uh, and eight stakes driven into the ground in the areas surrounding each shrine to keep the power of the ruin at bay. Okay, then. And that's what we saw behind Kofu's gym. Interesting. But we saw the blue one, though. Okay. In other words, if all the stakes of for a given shrine were to be removed, it would release the Pokemon held inside. Don't you think it would be nice to free those Pokemon from the confines of their tiny little shrine spooks? It would be kind of cool. 
yeah, sure. I don't know if she'd like that answer, though. Um, huh, the kind soul I see. You are proving truly useful. According to a descendant of the Pokemon wielders in the story, you must have a bond with Pokemon in or with the Pokemon in order to remove the snakes. Oh, or a Pokemon, okay. I'm sure someone as a Pokemon savvy as yourself would have no trouble at all with that. Um, you can choose for yourself whether to believe me or not, but I will mark the locations of these shrines on your map. Okay. And, yep, that's 100% what I saw. I saw four different colors, too. There's purple, blue, yellow, and green. But interesting. Well, thanks for the picture. Um, I'd rather go myself, of course, but skipping out my classes to go adventuring seems to have made the director a little suspicious of me. Well, obviously, I would be kind of suspicious, too, if my teacher was kind of running out of the classroom. But okay, then. Um, huh. You can think of this as part of your treasure hunt. Treasure of Ruin are still treasures, after all. I hope you will in in investigate these shrines, if you're s at all inclined to do so. Okay. Thank you. You feel trusted by Miss Rayfort. I'm wondering if she's still- yep, yeah, she's still here. I'm seeing if I can get a better look at her design to see if I see any other weird, like, relics. Not really. Her glasses are kind of interesting. Well, what's going on with this thing? It looks like a fish. That's what I'm kind of getting. But I'm not really sure. It kind of reminds me of, like, Kyogre, kind of. But, hmm, okay. I think it's Kyogre. But I'm not really sure on that one. Before we go ending off today's episode, because I think we have to finish the Legends before going any further. But we'll talk to her one last time, at least. Um, I do hope you will take on the hunt for the treasures of Bruin, if you're so inclined. Okay, she's done. For now. So Jacques and Rayfort will have to finish in the same episode, then. Just because, obviously, now we now begin what would be the Legendary Hunts, or the Legends of Ruin Hunts. As well as, uh, the evolution for, Mi or not Mimikyu, uh, I'm trying to remember your name. Um, really? <laughs> of course, I, now I'm forgetting his name just because I didn't really get to use him at all. But Gimme Ghoul. Definitely, with that being said, we have the evolution and the four legends of ruin. And then we're officially done with the Pokedex. And officially done with the main story with the Academy. And then Team Stars after that. But interesting though. But there we is. Um, the Grass Wither Shrine. Oh, they have names. The Fire Scored Shrine. Okay, so that one's obviously Fire. Ground Blight. And then the final one, the Ice Wren Shrine. Okay, so one's Ice, one's Ground, one's Fire, one's Grass. Okay. Interesting. I'm wondering if they're uh, dual typing or not. Because they all have something to do with, like, Scourge, Blight, Rend, and then as well as the Wither. So I'm guessing they're, they're typing, obviously, Grass, Fire, Ground, and Ice. But they are either going to be a Ghost or a Dark type connected to it as well. That's interesting. Hmm. Okay then. Well, Ruin definitely would fit Dark types, I would think. But also Ghost would work as well, because I, like I said, Ghost types tend to have some darker Pokedex entries. But with that being said, we're now officially beginning the end of our Yuva Academy stories, because the legends are now attached to it. So, with that being said, thank you all for watching, have a wonderful rest of your day. In the next episode, we will be looking into the Legends of Ruin, and honestly, that's going to be pretty interesting, since we're now officially, you know, finishing the Pokedex. So, with that being said, keep being spooky, have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out. Hey boys and girls, thank you all for watching today's episode. If you liked what you saw today, please leave a like and maybe even subscribe. And hit the bell notification down below. If you guys have any kind of suggestions for games, please put that in the comments down below as well. Thank you all for watching today's episode, and keep being spooky. Peace out guys.